God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Welcome to the Hour of Deliverance. Now, I'm Reverend Dr. K.E. Holmes, and I, before we move any further, want to pray for you. Father, I thank you so much for your people, and I thank you for any and everyone listening. I speak life and health upon each person. I speak your word and your promise, your provision for each one listening. For those that need health, I speak health, wholeness, and healing. For those that need finance, I speak wealth, health, in financial matters. I speak that you provide for them as you do the lilies of the field, that you meet their need, not only according to their need, but according to your riches and glory. And I thank you for the answers that they need for business and social things, for family and for different dilemmas, for decisions that need to be made, that you give them to move in wisdom. Because wisdom said, I will show you, I will teach you in the ways of life and show you witty inventions. God, give each one to know and to understand what to do, how to do it, so that it's not only the right decision for them now, but in every area that it touches. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, we want to look today at Elohim and his patterns. Now, God's patterns are so vast that we need to pay attention. And part of how he gives us to pay attention is also something we need to pay attention to. Now, that's not double talk. Some of you will remember that the seven churches each had a different revelation of Jesus Christ. And yet, there is only one Jesus Christ. There is only one Son of God, Son of Man. There is only one Emmanuel, only one uh, Messiah. But even that, you see the pattern of God that speaking of one individual, speaking of one, he gives many aspects. And then you can see in the seven churches he gives I'm going to put it in college terms he gives you to major on a certain aspect but it is all one and so I'm I'm going to share with you some things that are personal the way God gave me to understand but that's because of the way God's given my mind to work God has given your mind to work in ways that might be different it doesn't make it wrong and it doesn't make it right in all things, it makes it right for what God has given you to do and where he's given you to function. Here again, that's a pattern of God. Now, I showed you for the revelation, but say for the tribes of Israel, each one had a different banner. Each one had a different aspect of what they are to bring and how and what they are to do. Everybody's not a Levite. Everybody's not the priesthood. Everybody's not and yet, as I say that, I remember in one place where Moses said, would all God's people were prophets. And I usually like to show that as a, a prerequisite to the church, what God would have once he got us to his timing, in his time of things that he ordained from the foundation of the earth, even before that he ordained in his son, that there would be a time when all of God's people would be prophets. And so we see signals of these things. And right now we're going to look at patterns. Now we're going to look at patterns in many different ways. Some of you are going to see the pattern according to science. Some of you are going to see patterns according to the prophetic. Some of you are going to see the patterns according to history. And others are going to see the patterns according to man. And then yet others according to, today I'll say, technology. These things have always been in the earth. And I will warn you that modern man always thinks that we know better than previous generations. Now, I'll tell you right off, that's not true. No one knows more. No point of mankind knows more than closer to Adam. Even through the fall, Adam knew more of what to do and how to do it. Remember, God put him in the garden and had him name all the animals. God gave him the how-to, the know-how and the what 
for botany, for all kinds of things, to deal with it intricately, to deal with it entertainmently, to deal with it in every way that man is to deal with things. Now, he didn't take that away just because of the fall. You're going to find that uh, we know the scripture, and we usually use it one way, that the that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That's God's doesn't repent of having given the gifts and the calling. He doesn't take them back. It's not that we don't make God sorry. Yes, we do. When we don't want to be holy as he is holy, but he will not take back the authority that he's given us. He will not take back the power that he's given us. He will not take back the equipment that he's given us. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of that that we're missing on, but that's because we gave it away, not because God took it. That doesn't mean God won't put down as creator. He will put down anything that he created, but he doesn't take in peace and take in part. He warns in peace and in part. He warns in increments and he warns so that we don't have to totally be annihilated or something doesn't totally have to be dealt with. He will warn us. There's five uh, stages of judgment for a nation that if you don't serve him, he doesn't automatically take the land away from you, although that's what will happen in the end if you continue not to. But the first warning is all kinds of weather patterns that destroy the nation, that destroy the economy, that destroy our plans that are not according to him. Then the next part of judgment, the 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 weather, <laughs> not just calamities that cause problems in the earth itself, but then in the weather. Remember, part of the blessing of God is that I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help, the help come, my help cometh from the Lord, and he will show us wonders in the heavens that are supposed to remind us basically that he's in charge, that he's Lord, that he is Elohim, that the earth is his and he gave us charge and that we're out of order. And if we continue not to, then those things exponentiate those two things. And then if we continue, then the animals in our own land begin to turn. Uh, I live where there's lots of bears the bears don't normally come out and harm people. Enough happens once in a while for people to know that you don't fool with the bear. But the bears usually aren't coming out to hurt people. But and certainly not deer and other animals, birds. But right now in time, we will notice that the animals are doing harm to humans at a rate that is unusual and different, or even a kind that is not to be expected. Like we might expect a bear to tear up something if he found the honey, but we don't expect a bear to tear up for no reason because that's not what animals do. But then a different kind, for instance, the birds, the ravens don't attack people. The ravens go after what's already been dead or or they're unclean and, and they go after there's the scavenger they're here to clean the earth of the things that can cause disease if they're just lay, lay, lying around that's God in his wisdom so we don't expect them to attack people and yet when we're in that third stage of judgment those kinds of things may happen you want to know the pattern of God you want to know and I'm not going through all the judgment patterns. What I'm showing you is that God has his patterns. We need to have the mind of God and the understanding from God so that we recognize the patterns. And that way we can not only recognize the patterns of God, but we know the patterns of man. We know the patterns of our enemy. We know the patterns of nature and can discern correctly. Now, God has given us to think and to conclude. So we're always going to think about things and we're always going to come to conclusions. But when we move in the things of God, we know if it's a correct conclusion. We know if we're thinking along the lines of what God has given. I enjoy a testimony of Einstein. 
that he knew that God had given him a mind. And yet, early in his career, and even before he came to a career, he was thought of as someone who didn't know, someone who didn't have intelligence. But what he did, regardless, is he knew how to think into where God is, the parts that he understood, and God showed him things. And he wrote some of them down, and they're profound to us. And the other things that we didn't want to take in because it was just too far along, but he understood, we didn't write those things down. So even with the theory of relativity and understanding space, he understood ether. Now, God gave Tesla to understand those things, and Einstein even told you that with the theory of of relativity, while it meets all of these things in this area, it doesn't deal with the ether. But modern man at that time wasn't up on the ether. As a matter of fact, I think it was 2012 or 2014 that for those things going on in CERN, we said we discovered space. Well, how about that? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There's a whole lot of patterns right there that science hasn't even caught up to that Adam already understood, and those closest to Adam understood many things. So let's get to it and look at God's patterns. tries to call your friend and you wonder if this is all worth it is it all worth it in the end oh, oh, oh. i'm here to tell you that you are more than a conqueror through him who loves you he is greater than the world of trouble that will brought you there is nothing in Elohim and his patterns, or the patterns of Elohim. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I want you to see the patterns of God so that you know as a human being, and especially as one called of God, how to move in the pattern that God gives you to move in, and even to recognize. Now, I'm going to jump over to Hebrews 11, Three, we call Hebrews 11 the faith chapter because I want you to see that through faith we understand. Now the whole rest of the verse is through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And he goes on to say so that everything that we see isn't made of anything that we see. God creates. He created. We understand and we know from nothing. And if you even want to believe the Big Bang, although there's so much against uh, about that, that Even science has shown that that doesn't work, even though not too much science is teaching that, because when we put a thing out there, we don't know how to retract it. But the science shows that the Big Bang doesn't work. The same way evolution, by the time the father of the evolution theory, Darwin, by the time he was uh, older and had tested out the theory of evolution, remember, it was just a theory. I've read the microfiche uh, writings, I've read them on microfiche, sorry, that he, he said it doesn't work. He tried out the theory all these years, all this time, it doesn't work. Things don't get better, they actually decline. And then for the things that look like they get better, 
then it cannot reproduce. It cannot bring it again. This is a pattern of God. This is something that God told us in, in his word in the beginning. Now, I'm also going to connect with you something God said so that we understand how to think. We're given to think. Doesn't mean everything we think is correct. God said, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. He gave us his patterns so that we know which way to think. And he told us wisdom. Always take yourself into Proverbs 8 and Proverbs 9 just to get some things about wisdom in a nutshell. Wisdom is more profitable than rubies, so it's worth more than money. Now, wisdom will teach you some things about money so that you have money, but wisdom is more profitable. Wisdom is more valuable, far above money. But I want to take you to what God said he wants you to understand. It's Isaiah 28.10. Now, you can read forward. As I always share with you, God is his own best uh, interpreter. The word of God is its own best commentary. So, When I give you a scripture, read before it, read behind it, because God gave it all. The point that I want you to know right now is God said, who am I going to show knowledge? Who am I going to give to understand wisdom? And he says, those that are weaned from the breast. Now, God wants you to have the sincere milk of the word so that you grow by it. But he also wants you to grow and grow up. Now, in my whole saved life, what I've understood in 50 years, is that when we learn something, we like to put a a seal around it and make it like that's all of it, instead of learning, understanding that we're to grow in the knowledge of the things that God gives us, even when it's astounding, and when it's new and wonderful and glorious, it's still not all of it. I've learned that it's a thimbleful, a thumbnailful even. So, in Isaiah, he says, who am I going to show knowledge? Who am I going to who am I going to give to know wisdom? The one that's weaned from the breast. But then he gives you the pattern of how he's going to do that. And this is something that you want to remember. He says precept must be upon precept. So he's going to give you the the principle that governs everything when you're looking at something. But then he says again and he's not stuttering, precept must be upon precept. That's the next subordinate rules that govern just about everything, but not the main precept that must be. And then he gives you a whole different category. That, again, is a pattern of God. He'll tell you first, second, third, and then he'll give a different category after that then. When we look at the gifts of the Spirit, most of the time, We're thinking, and most of our doctrines, we're thinking and completely miss the patterns that God has put there in, uh, was it 1 Corinthians 12, uh, pardon me, 1 Corinthians, yes, 12, the gifts of the Spirit. And we miss where he separates by the same Spirit, by the same Spirit, by the same Spirit. He names several things, and then he says, by the same Spirit. That's him dividing so that we know how to divide. And we come up with really good-sounding, highfalutin, knowledge-sounding divisions. But we've come up with man's idea of things when we don't use God's pattern. So I want to show you the first thing. Precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. So God's going to show you a thing, and then he's going to show, he'll show you the basics of a thing. Then he'll shed some more light Remember one of the first things God did when he created? He created light. Or he he doesn't say he created the light. He said, let there be light. And that's Elohim. Let there be. There's a letting that needs to happen. And we need to know the difference. We like to just say he created light. And yes, go ahead and say that if you want to. But understand what he did. He said, let Look at the Word of God. So many things that he tells us to let that are extremely important that that's the how. He didn't say push it. He didn't, some things he told us to speak and we do say God it said. But what he said is let. There's a letting in a whole realm and different realms and spheres of things concerning God. 
know that pattern of letting. Know the power of letting. And know that letting is different than some other things. Than commanding. Letting is a very different thing than pushing. I'll say pushing. I want to move on. So he says precept must be upon precept. He says precept upon precept. Now, no one God says a thing twice. That's how it is. It's not another way, no matter how much you think of it, no matter how many theories you got on it, no matter how many equations you came to it. It's going to end up pretty much like with the difference between Einstein and Tesla, that you're going to both find out that you were writing the thing that God gave you the understanding on. And if you try to push it rather than let it be where it belongs, if you push it to another place, it doesn't go there. Or you'll find like Darwin. Go ahead. Do the theory. He came up with the theory. That was a good thing to have a theory. And then he spent the rest of his life testing it out. And then at the end, he showed that the evidence does not support evolution. You don't get better, you get worse if you go by evolution. Here again, understand the pattern of man. God gives us to know and understand the pattern of man. That when the history isn't like we want it to be, if it isn't like we said, we like to change it. Now, we know that, but I'll take you back to modern day so it's not an ouch to us today. But when we do the archaeological, archaeological digs and look at things, we see that the history that's written in stone is different than how it actually happened. If you read something from one nation, the exact thing that the way another nation experienced it, they're going to say something else. Now, modern man, we like to just think because we dug it up, we dug up the truth. The truth of what we get to find is certain certain people in histories make it a point to change the history. We love the discovery of King Tut's tomb. And after that, years later, it came out that, oh my goodness, it was his, his uh, I'm going to use a modern day term, his sidekick his, that was actually buried in that tomb. What did he do? Now we know that he buried himself in King Tut's tomb and then put King Tut in what was supposed to be his tomb. We had so many years when we didn't know and understand that, and we're celebrating so many things, and now we have museums on King Tut and his tomb. But it wasn't King Tut that was in there. Why? Because what man likes to do is change history, so that when the next generation comes along, you find what man wants you to believe and what man wants you to think. Here again, you want to know that pattern in man. God will show it to you in his word, and he has. This is why the scripture tells us in, in um, the Gospels that Jesus didn't need anybody to show him the understanding of man. He knew man. He knew the thoughts of man. He knew the heart of man. And the Gospels let us know that because he came here as God in the flesh so he is a man, was man, showing us how to live, showing us how to live as human, but coming as God? Yeah, he knew man. So see the pattern. Precept must be a print precept, but then God changes the type or the category, line upon line. And he stays with this pattern of doubling, line upon line. He's not stuttering. He says it twice. This is three groups of pairs. The first pair is precept. The second pair is line. But then watch. On the third set, God changes a little bit of the pattern for the whole thing. He says, here a little, there a little. So you're here a little, and you're there a little. And I like to call that the the particular and the precise when it's personal, when it comes directly to you. And here again, the pattern of man, we first want to know what pertains to me. But God's going to show you the principle that rules everything before he brings it to the... Now about this and about that, about the hairs on your head. 
He first lets you know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, the principle to go by. And then he's going to show you many other things so that when you get down to the hairs on your head, there's some things that you understand. That you have a whole body of understanding. This is why Jeremiah could tell us, not the, don't let the rich man glory in his riches and don't let the strong man glory in his strength, but let he that glory understand. You're supposed to glory. Now we do a whole lot of glorying that's not what God calls glory. Just like we do a whole lot of thinking that's not what God says think. It doesn't mean don't think just because we can do it the wrong way. No, what he says is let he that glory, glory in this, that he know and understand God. And go look it up because it might say his God. If it does, it's because you need to be in relationship. Now, for anybody listening, if you're not in relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, a lot of what I'm saying, it it can help you scientifically. The same way that uh, if you're in school and you're given a subject, even if that's not your major, you're able to understand very much about that subject so that you can pass that subject. You don't, it doesn't have to be your major. Well, there's a lot you can understand when you're not in relationship with God when you're not in personal relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Remember, he's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes into the Father but by him. That's the Father's invitation. You can't come in another way, even if you think you did, through knowledge, through happenstance. Yeah, you'll think you're in, and you'll find out that you're not. If you are not in relationship with him, there's a lot that you can understand There's a lot that you can see in his patterns. The pattern of the universe is the pattern of the universe. The pattern of fingerprint is the pattern of fingerprint. You can study it. You can see it. You can know it. You can understand it. But to understand the thought of God, to understand the purpose of God, the what and the why of what he ordained and how he equipped you for what he ordained, how you are ordained to rule and reign. Those kind of things, you'll probably mess up a lot. Now, if you're in relationship with God, and I invite you to do that, if you're not, just right now, just say, Jesus, I I believe that you're born of a virgin. I know that you're the Son of God. I know that you are Lord. I know that you are Savior. Save me. I give myself to you. Save me. And God lets you know that if you believe in your heart and if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is raised from the dead, then he'll forgive you your sins. Sin, 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 that sinful nature. And the Holy Spirit will birth you into the body of Christ. That's that baptism, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That baptism that brings you, births you, into the body of Christ. Here, God's pattern again. We know that when children are born, it's with a a lot of water and a coming through to move from the belly, from that realm, into actually living on the planet independently. And that's a baptism. That's a pattern of God. New birth, you are birthed into the kingdom of God. By the Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's not talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's talking about new birth. There is one Lord. You only have one mother, one father, one Lord, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, pardon me. One baptism. There's only one faith, and that's the faith of the Son of God. It's by His faith that we come. That's not even your faith. It's by the grace of God. See the patterns of God, how he does things. Now I'm going to jump to another pattern just because of the time that it's taking. And I want you to see from Genesis 18 in 15, the pattern of God in his teaching. And there's a graphic that I love that shows the reflection of the word teaching. Uh, pardon me, the word teach. And I love it because it shows 
that it says learn. That's a pattern of God in his word. It won't take you there now. That to teach means that you learn. Now we know with man, there's a whole lot of things that we teach that people didn't learn it. They didn't learn it well. That's why we do tests to find out how much did you actually learn from the teaching or from being taught. So when God, in the word of God, when he says teach, that's because a thing is actually learned. Here again, the mind of God on the matter is different than man likes to think. God said about Abraham in Genesis 18, he says, pardon me, he says, 19, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring him, bring upon Abram that which he hath spoken of him. The Patterns of Elohim. my shepherd and I shall not want. He may give me the light down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul and he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For all his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, cause you're with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Why should I be afraid? Oh, for is my shepherd. He is my shepherd. I shall. Now, the patterns of Elohim. I want you to understand that when in the Word of God, when God says teach, it includes learning. It's not the way man does, that you may or may not have learned a thing. And I want you to see in Genesis 18, 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now, I'm showing you that because God already gave Abram a promise and then gave him a new name that matches the promise that he gave. That's another pattern with God, names. Anybody that knows me knows that I am downright ballistic about my firstborn's name. People like to call him a name that is popular in the earth. And not the name the way it is in God and with God. It has to do with the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Ein, which has to do with the eagle eye of God, which has so much about God about it. When God gives a name, it's because of the heritage and the destiny, the equipment, the calling, and all so much more that he's given along with it. And he changed Abraham, Abram to Abraham. Most of you know that the Hebrew boys who went through the fiery furnace, most people like to call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because that's what the heathen gave them. That's what the Chaldeans named them. I like to refer to them according to the name that they had as Hebrew because that's part of their heritage through Abraham. And so you'll hear me always refer to, to them as Ananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. So that they're always moving, and their destiny is always moving, and their dynasty is always moving in the earth according to what God gave. You see, in the beginning, God. 
you see that through faith we understand that through the word, through the word, we frame our world, taking after God. Taking, the worlds were framed by the word of God, Hebrews 11.3. And God shows us that's how you frame your world. And so you say the things that God says. And you speak in the things of God. Now, if you want to speak into things of man, yeah, then you talk Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you're one that God has given to speak into the history of man and to speak to man, and yes, God gives us to do that. I learned to do that with uh, people that deal with mental illness, to speak to the spirit of the man and not to the illness. I speak to the illness to bind it. I speak to the illness to cast it out. And I'm not just talking about demons. I'm talking about illness, things that try to park in on us, uh, infirmities. But especially with mental illness, God doesn't have a mentally ill spirit. Elohim is the one who breathed into man and became a living soul. He is not the. He did not create a tor- tormented soul or a sick soul. Now, as we read through the scriptures, we find out torment happens on a soul level, and that's mostly what mental illness is, is to do with. And so you can speak to the person, and mostly music, but that's a whole other pattern that God has given. But because I said that, I'll remind you that when Saul the king was tormented, so that he's acting like a crazy person, today we might call it manic, we might, whatever we would call it, understanding on the psychological level, or what I would show you through the word, through the soul level, the psychiatric level is the soul level. David played music that changed what was going on or changed the atmosphere or the innisphere going on with that psychological profile or that's the soul of that man. Music makes a difference in plants, humans, and all things, not just for things that are ill. But you want to know if that's your field, if that's an, uh, where you're anointed, if that's where God has given you mind, spirit, or ability, then you want to know that music, like color, music can speak correction or just plain speak adjustment. So let's go to this again. To know the pattern, God says, for I know him. You want to know that God knows you. And because he knows you, he equipped you a certain kind of way. He called you a certain kind of way. Now, the pattern that I want you to see here with Abraham is that he will command his children. God didn't, God didn't, let me finish the verse. 19, Genesis eighteen nineteen. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Now watch, his commandment his, has already been given to have a certain effect. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Now this is Yahweh, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Yahweh, God of covenant, God who ratified the covenant, to do justice. Now this is what the commandment that, that he is to teach, what it's for. And judgment. Now later... In the New Testament, we get to understand because we're to rule and reign. The same way that he made him a prince in the earth, a king in the earth, Abraham, the whole body of Christ is to be that. We're a royal priesthood, but that's God's pattern, and he's taught it to us way back. And what we are to do, he said, he will command the children And actually, I invite you to look up that word command so that you get to see. uh, When he's talking command, it's not just rules. It's after the relationship. It's his children. So there's relationship. But it's a command, not a request. It's the what to do. It's not that box of chocolates I like to refer to. uh, That when we have the things in the word, God means for us, it all pertains to us. It's not for us to pick and choose like a box of chocolates. 
he will command his children and his household. Now that's those that are born to you and those that come to you. God has blessed me with three children out of my womb to li- that live in the earth today. He has also blessed me with spiritual children, is how we term to phrase it. He has blessed me with those that I am like a parent to, not just those I'm like a prophet to, but those that I'm, I'm a mom. And that's why I have the nickname Mama Holmes, or just plain Mama, because God has given me that. And he said about Abram, I know him, that he will command his children, those who are yours, those who are out of you, and his household, those who are under your umbrella, to use a, a modern day term, your household. Now, we already saw in, this is Genesis 18, we saw back in Genesis 14 that his household was mighty and trained. That's what the commandment has to do with. So that when you need to to follow a command, when you need to, to move in what you are commanded for and taught for, you can do it without hesitation and you can do it with all the power that you're given that for. When you go back to Genesis 14, that's the, the chapter that tells about the first communion and Melchizedek. You see that though the trained in Abram's household, 300 and something, I, I forget the number, 300 and something, look it up, that his household was trained. Why? Because, as God said, I know him. He will command his children and his household. So the command has to do with not only being told what and how to do, but that relationship so that you learn it, so that you do it, so that you're skillful in it, and so that you listen when it's time to use it. And then watch. He says, And they shall keep the way of Yahweh. They will keep the way of the Lord, who some of you I know like to say Jehovah. They will keep the way of the one who made the covenant, the one who ratified the covenant, the one who keeps the covenant. You see, it's God who said, I know him. We can say, I know God. He wants us to know him. Remember that he the glory, glory in this, that he know and understand God. And I'm pretty sure it says his God. Look it up. To do justice and judgment. Now, particularly to follow him in those ways. That the Lord may bring upon Abram that which he hath spoken of him. Now, we already know the history. If you have your Bible, all you have to do is just read through Genesis. Even before you get to Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, you know that, well, they kept his way. They, they learned it. They knew it. And they'd walk away from his way. And then you go to Samuel, well, go to Judges, and you find that, yeah, they departed from his way a lot, from the way of the Lord a lot. But every time they got to a point, and unfortunately it's usually way further than what you like, they would repent. And they would want to come back to the commands And I'm not talking about just the Ten Commandments. Remember, this is relationship. This was way before the Ten Commandments were given. God has principles, precept upon precept. He has principles in the earth. He has principles that he gave. Principles that he's ordained and that he taught from Adam. Long before Moses, long before he gave gave the Pentateuch long before the law, the Levitical law. Now, within the Levitical law, there are a lot of things that God gives the particulars on so that we understand. But again, if you're Abram, if you're Isaac, if you're Jacob, you understand a different aspect and you live a different aspect Abram dug wells and named them and did 
masterful, royal, and royal business negotiations, Isaac learned how. And yet, when Isaac went to claim the wells that his father had dug and that his, with skill, mind you, that's getting it done skill, knowing how to command the people skill, knowing how to possess the land in royal matters and in business matters skill. When Isaac went to do some wells, there were, uh, there was contention. Now he may have learned from watching his father deal with a lot that you don't have to always take on the contention. Every fight isn't your fight. He might have learned that watching his father where he dealt with Melchizedek because there was a whole lot of fighting going on and he didn't get into it until it pertained to him. But when it came to the wells that belonged to him, he moved on and he moved on and he moved on and he moved on till God made room for him. This is where you want to know to move in the pattern of Elohim and not just the pattern of man. patterns of Elohim. Now, I hope I'm connecting the dots enough for you to get to this, but I'm going to show you in Leviticus 18. And I hope that you know that you're not under the law. Jesus took us out from under the law. He is the fulfillment. That doesn't mean that the law doesn't count. It means that it's all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. But in the law, we get to know a pattern of some things. Right now, I'll, I'll tell you up front, one of the patterns I want you to understand is that when God makes a correction, he doesn't tell you everybody who did it wrong. He doesn't point out every person. He doesn't say, now look, Abraham married his sister. I'm going to tell you in this chapter, don't marry your sister. He, there's one of the main tribes, I was just listening to the scripture, that he married his father's sister. Well, in Leviticus 18, he tells you, look, do not marry your aunt. We even know in the New Testament, the man that had a stepmother, well, way back in Leviticus, he lets us know that you don't marry your father's wife. And then for some of you that want to say, well, it's not marriage. In Leviticus 18, he lets you know you don't lie with. And he uses a certain terminology so that you know that this isn't... <laughs> 
This isn't just marriage. This isn't you don't lie with. You don't you don't do certain things. Now, some of this, when some of us read it because of the times that we live in, it's going to upset us because there's some things in here that we just want to do and we think it's it's acceptance to do them. And because we're in the habit, an ungodly habit, of throwing out anything that's in Leviticus because that was for the Jews, it, we think we have an excuse to throw it out. No, we don't. The Levitical law that is specifically to the Jews has to do with sacrifice and circumcision. Does that mean you should never be circumcised? Well, I'll tell you what. Most any male would do a good thing to be circumcised just because we've seen that there's uh, cervical cancer that, that is extremely significantly less among Hebrew women and it's attributed to circumcision. That doesn't mean go out and get circumcised if you're not. It just means that there are certain things that God gave that has more to do than with following a Levitical religious law. As a matter of fact, almost all of the Levitical laws also have to do with some things about medical science that we learn today. The things that you that you you don't go touch this and touch that, you don't uh, after without washing. Well, medical science knows that you wash, you don't go from one patient to another without washing. By the time we learned that, I think it was the 12th century, the it wasn't done and, and one particular doctor recognized that women were dying as one doctor would go to from patient to patient without washing and he began to require that everybody wash in between and because that's not what was done, he was ostracized for it. By the time science, modern man at that time, got to understand that, yes, you spread disease and sickness by not washing in between. By the time that was understood, the man who did get to understand it was ostracized to the point that he lost his mind. But now we all know to do it today. Well, that's Levitical law. It's not just about religion. Almost anything God gives has more to do with anything we know to think about. And this is why it's good to obey him. And he let you know. The Concerning the sacrifice, that's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. That's why we don't follow that. But you just look at, at uh, chapter 18 on your own. I, I'm letting you know now for the times that we live in. There's going to be some things there that you're going to say, well, that's why I don't follow the Bible. Well, I'm letting you know that's why you want to. You want to have the mind of God so that when he says that you don't match this with this, some of it he says it's an abomination. Other places he lets you know it's confusion. And I mean right here in this this chapter 18. So let me just read through so that I'm not picking picking one just to pick on our times. But God says, speak to the, he's the, the Lord spoke unto Moses. Now this is Yahweh, the one who ratifies covenant, the one who gives covenant, the one who keeps covenant, the one who's in charge of the relationship of covenant. He speaks to Moses, the one that he called out. So understand, God will speak to the leader. And then he tells the leader to speak to the people. And he says, speak to the children of Israel. Now, don't get ridiculous and, and think that he has to speak to them all at one time the way we like to do preaching nowadays. We want an arena. The whole people of Israel don't fit in an arena. They were already more than a million people when they came out of Egypt. Now he says, speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Let people know when it's God talking, when you're telling them their relationship with God. And understand, when you're telling rules, it's got to be by relationship. Man will automatically buck against rules, resist rules. It's got to be relationship. Remember, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Without love, all commandments feel like his lordship over you and bossing you around and pushing you around. And even with love, when things aren't done in love, 
That's how it comes off. That's why God tells the leaders in the New Testament, he says, don't lord over one another. It's not that you don't have preeminence over one another. It's not that there's not order and hierarchy the way God gave it. And for some of you, I will remind you, in 1 Corinthians 12, he says, first, first apostles, second prophets, first, second, third, and <laughs> go to it. For some reason, my mind went blank. But he says, first, second, third. Then he says, after that, then goes into a different category. Here again, the pattern of God. And when God says first, second, third, he means first, second, third. And part of why my mind went that time is because in 1 Corinthians 12, it's a different a different order than what we like to look at in the fivefold ministry. And we live in days and times where we're really big on the fivefold ministry. It's all the word of God. We want to do it by his pattern so that we can think as he thinks, so that we are paying attention to the things that he said pay attention to, and so that we move in the order that he gave us to move in, and also in the purpose and the the reasoning. How did he say it to, to Abram? In the judgment and the justice, not just about what we think, you can we, we think a whole lot of things from our emotions, not realizing that emotions is part of our affections. And affections, God said, set your affections on things above, and not on and specifically he said, not on things in the earth. So look at this. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Take it from above, take it from covenant, and take it from Elohim the one from in the beginning, this is how he did things. And this is the circumstance from which he did things. Even that, you'll have to go back to when I said it in other times, how I showed you that the the Spirit of God moved upon, upon the face of the waters. That the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. We need to understand the pattern from God that everything doesn't have to be one certain way for the spirit of Elohim to move. Everything doesn't have to be one certain way for us to move. We get that from God. Because right there, right after that, God said, let there be light. And there was. Remember, he's framing the world. God saw the light that it was good. You examine. You examine. And you judge justice judgment and God divided the light from the darkness now you can go go on remember precept must be upon precept now precept upon precept and then you divide that out so watch this he says after the doing after the doings of the land of Egypt wherein you dwell ye shall not do God's letting you know there's people around you don't do what they do do not look to the people around you. There's another New Testament uh, scripture that lets you know comparing themselves by themselves, it's not wise. He lets you know. He lets you know. This is not wise. And he goes on to show you where it goes and how it goes. It is not wise. And it will take you to wickedness. And that's what he tells you here. That's the pattern that God wants you to know. It's always the pattern wherever you find it in the word. I'm showing you right here way back in Leviticus. He let you know. You're going to do, you're going to do, he told you in Genesis. If you do like the people around you, I'm going to have to destroy you. Part of why I'm giving you these, this, the gift of this land is because they have not esteemed what I gave them, the gift, the land that I gave them. And they have not glorified me. Our purpose is to glorify God. No matter what part of the pattern he's given us. Remember? There is the pattern of your fingerprint. There is a pattern of the sand of the sea. There is a pattern of Elohim. Understand and know. 
you are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God. God has blessed the work of your hands and you walk in favor with God and man. You think from the word and you make wise moves. You are blessed and excel in all that you do. You always attract people of wisdom and an excellent spirit and you engage in transactions and situations of vast, excellent and lasting merit. You are occupied with people and endeavors on a plane of timely, immediate, high and positive return in the internal, the external and the eternal realm, in the temporal, the celestial, the natural, the spiritual in the personal, interpersonal community, national and global. You move in all that pertains to life and godliness according to the promises of God in all of their fullness. You are continuously and profoundly supplied in time, resources, wisdom and health, in favor and finance and all manner of wealth, in revelation and vision of things present and things to come, in the knowledge and understanding and zeal of the Holy One. You are called to His glory, His virtue and His praise. You are elected to his power, his loving kindness, and his grace. You are clothed with humility, and you are prudent in matters. You are blessed and anointed, highly favored and appointed, and you are full of the word of God and its demonstration. God has appointed your going out and your coming in. He has ordained that your very life exemplify him. Righteousness, justice, and holiness unto the Lord is the mark of your call. And the resurrection power and the glory of God, you will fulfill all. You are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God.